Zoe Kravitz uh, has uh, talked about her experience as an actress. Are we gonna do B-roll? Like that's why, I, okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. All right, so Zoe Kravitz is a Catwoman in The Batman. Uh, this is a movie that everyone has been super excited to see. It's out in theaters now and uh, she's a fantastic actress. Uh, I think that uh, her acting speaks for itself. But it turns out that in a recent interview with The Guardian, she revealed that she almost auditioned for a small role in a previous Batman film. And this was Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises. Apparently, she didn't even get an opportunity to read for the part because she was quote unquote too urban. They didn't wanna go in an urban direction. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about her talent as an actress, it wasn't about her experience, it wasn't about any of that. She was immediately shot down according to her account of this because they didn't wanna go in an urban direction. So let me give you the details here. In 2012, Kravitz attempted to audition for the Batman film, The Dark Knight Rises, but was told she was too urban for the role. I don't know if it came directly from Chris Nolan, she says, anxious not to impugn the reputation of an award winning director. I think it was probably a casting director of some kind or a casting director's assistant. Being a woman of color, she says in the rest of the interview, and being an actor and being told at the time that I wasn't able to read because of the color of my skin and the word urban being thrown around like that, that was what was really hard about that moment. So look, I'm a tiny bit surprised that they're still doing it this late, although that was back in 2012. 2012, I mean, that was yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, that's a good point. But does that happen? Yes, I was in a room where it happened. So for the people who are like, oh no, there's nobody in the country ever says things like that. And especially in liberal Hollywood, you're just wrong. So we there was a, a series, a television series, a pilot that I was, a writer on and I remember the head of the network came and they were trying to pick a host. And I was a little biased because one of the top two people that were up for the role was Ben Mankiewicz, who was my co-host. Now at the time, we had not started the Young Turks yet. So he wasn't my co-host yet, but he was already a really, really good friend because we had to work together in Miami, okay? And the the head of the network, uh, said about another guy that was in the running, he's too urban, he was black. And so the urban is the code word they use for black. It's so pathetic, and, uh, God. And then, uh, and then about Ben, they said he's too New York. That's their code word for Jewish. Okay. I've never heard that before, yeah, that's too, amazing. Too New York, too intellectual, uh, those are all code, code words for Jewish. By the way, the executive was Jewish. They don't, they still use the code words because they live in, and, and now that was pre TYT, so it was around 2001, okay? Uh, so, but I it's mean, still amazing that in 2001 they're using that. Okay, I, I'm not denying what you're saying. I'm just curious because I'd never heard that before. How do you know that to New York is an indication that the person is too Jewish? Like, is that an assumption? Oh, the writers thing? talked about it afterwards. Oh, oh got there's it, got no it. question, okay. right? Yeah. And so, uh, and I think the network executive might have even made a joke about it. Like, oh, I'm also from New York, like with a wink. I, I That part I don't remember as well, mm-hmm. but there was no question what they meant, right? And so if you're wondering, hey, Jake, what did you do about it? I don't have any power there. I'm yeah, what are you a writer on a pilot, but being me being me, I raised my hand. Of course. As he, <laughs> as he said that, right? Look, I'm in the room. You put me in the room, I'm gonna say something, right? What did you say? I said, Okay, so the third guy was too urban. We're doing a TV show. The number one rated talk show in America is the Oprah Winfrey show. Okay, and the second guy is too New York. And the number one television show in America at the time was Seinfeld. Literally about Jews in New York, right? Like number one, both of them. And I'm like, do with that what you will, <laughs> okay. But no, it didn't affect them at all. But they still thought, no, can't have someone black, can't have someone Jewish. It's a lead in a, it was a game show slash talk show. No wonder it didn't work, right? And and so do executives think like that even in Hollywood? Yes, yes they do. And And so now a more benign version of that is, so I was on a couple of sets back in the 1990s, 
as a, as an extra, basically. And they color coordinate everything. They're obsessed with color overall, right? So if I was playing a reporter, all the reporters wore brown. All the people that were in the audience for this congressional hearing in the movie Contact, they all wore blue. And everybody was different color code. And then once I realized that, I, then I started looking at movies, I'm like, that is so funny and weird. How come we never noticed it? But yeah, that, those group of people all wear the same thing. Those group of people all wear something different, but the same for that group. So in a world obsessed with color, is it overly surprising that they would think thematically we're not going for the urban look in this movie? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not that surprising. So that story is very believable, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I definitely believe it. And uh, she had to clarify because her interview with The Guardian led to people misconstruing what she was saying. Because remember, it wasn't like she was in the running for a big role and she got denied because of the color of her skin. What she's arguing here is that she didn't even get a chance to audition. Like they didn't even give her a chance to like audition for the part. So she clarified that in a subsequent post on social media. And she said, um, I wanted to audition for a small part in the film and was told, I do not know who said this, but this is how it was worded to me, that they were not going urban on the part. This was something I heard a lot 10 years ago. It was a very different time. Okay, I wanna actually pause there because I really, first of all, I, I'm glad that she clarified it for the people who didn't pay close attention to what she originally said. I, I she. If people paid close attention and weren't obsessed with like clickbaity nonsense, then they would have understood exactly what she meant. But putting that aside, I do think it's important to address how culture changes, right? And so you have some people who don't want to accept that and they want to hold you to the same standards, the same standards that we have today when analyzing or judging your behavior from decades ago. And I think that that's wrong. I think it makes sense to consider the context of culture when people say certain things. There was a time in this country where, um, you know, well meaning people, I'm not even talking about people engaged in racist rhetoric, would use, I don't even want to say it, but not the N word, the other N word that's not as bad as the other N word. You know what I'm saying? I I'm do, afraid to say it. I I'm know. afraid to say it. I like know. it's just, but like that's the way people talk back then. Martin Luther King Jr., his speeches use that word a lot. And I remember Jenk reached out one day when he wanted to read a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. that had that word in it. Again, not the awful slur, but the other N word. And he's like, can I say this? Like, even if it's in the context of Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote. And I told him, yes, you should say it. What are you gonna do? You're gonna censor Martin Luther King Jr.? That's weird. But then but, I'm like, was that good advice? <laughs> I don't know, was it? No, today I read a, a, a quote from the Nazis when we were talking about the Russian invasion. Yeah. And I thought, 10 years from now, will they, or 20 years from now, will they look back and go, you read a quote of a Nazi that you shouldn't have done that, you, you know, that was wrong in hindsight? It's possible. It is possible. Right? Yeah. And so, look, guys, that's why we tell you that in the context of, What's real, right? So, and look, I'll go even further on the blackface issue. It was always wrong, but did everyone know that it was wrong? No. Ted Danson was going out with Whoopi Goldberg and he did blackface. Jimmy Kimmel did blackface. They weren't trying to insult black people. It doesn't mean that it was right, but it means that there was a different standard back then. Remember, all those people that worked on, on those TV shows, they none of them thought there was anything wrong with it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it, right? So now we're going back and saying, you all should have known. And now you're racist. No, wait a minute. No, no, that's not a fair standard, right? But in this context, she's saying, hey, by the way, the world has changed. But 10 years ago, this is what happened to me. Right, and that's not to justify what happened to her 10 years ago. What happened to her 10 years ago was wrong. 100% wrong, yeah. And what the story I told you that happened back in 2001, 100% wrong. And it's both like offensive and wrong and that's morally wrong. It's also factually wrong, as I pointed out. The number one shows were led by a black talk show host and a, and several Jewish comedians, and and they were number one. And that's what's wrong with racism and anti-Semitism and all those things. It's never true, right? So, so when we tell you that Zoe Kravitz is very very likely telling the truth based on the context, and there really was that level of racism, yes, 
even in so-called liberal Hollywood, yeah, that, that, it, that was the case. And probably to this day, there's still remnants of that for sure, right? Yeah. That's the reality. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.